Yo guys, Saber here. Welcome to today's video. So I'm really excited about this one because today it's the top 64 qualifier, which is the first qualifier I'm going to participate in this year. If I manage to finish in top two of the qualifier, I will qualify for the first open. So day one, it's a Swiss format and it's best of three. Um, that means that I only need to bring uh, three decks. One of them will get banned and I'll have to play two of them. Um, for day two, it's best of best of five, and I have to bring bring four decks. One of them will get banned. So, um, I was thinking a little bit here, and there are obviously a few different things you can do. Um, usually, you want to have some sort of strategy when you go into. You can just bring some good decks. You can try to target something. You can try to bring them decks that are tough to target. You have different lines now. The idea I'm I'm going to try to do here is actually something that I discussed with with Jess, and that is that we will try to target AQ and also a little bit of Dead Eye Ambush. So. The concept is that for Syndicate, we are going to play Tinboy. Now, first of all, just playing Syndicate is, is pretty crazy. Um, but we're going to play a version here with, with Tinboy. We have the mates for more more white punish, which hopefully, I'll just refresh because it's bugged out. Hopefully, this means that we will be able to deal with all the swarm that HU is doing. Like we have a Tinboy that will wipe both rows um, if we pay the tribute. And I think that will be enough. Um, Heat wave is a card you could take out. It's something not going, to, not going to be great in that matchup, but at the same time, it's very nice to have against Dead Eye because it actually works to deal with his um, scenario. So I played a little bit with the stack on ladder with some different versions, and I think this is okay. I think this is good. Um, now these Salamander mages are really, really strong, um, and I do think with the Tin Boy you actually have a pretty good matchup against both of these decks. I haven't really tested all that much, but that's my that's my theory. So it's very interesting to see if it actually works out. Um, the next up we have in our witches, and again we have done something like this. This deck is very close to normal, but we have done one cheeky change. So instead of playing um, Garold or Insace or Erdin, we are playing Lambert, which means there's no tall punish in this deck. Um, but the idea is that against AQ, against Dead Eye Ambush, nothing goes all right? Um, <clears throat> so, Lampard Swordmaster is just a very strong card because it punishes both these decks a lot. <clears throat> now, one thing that could go wrong for this deck is that if, if I go up against Dead Eye, the engine version of um, Dead Eye Ambush, they're playing the Sentries uh, uh, and they are playing Purify. That means that if they play their... Um, Sentry back row, I log it, purify it for instance, then the guest row goes out of fighting our range and I'm actually screwed. So there might be some issues with the with this deck, but against H is super strong and generally um if I go up against ambush did I ambush and not playing the engine version, it should also be super fine. Okay. Um obviously there are some mirror things as well and stuff that, that aren't ideal with this one, but I think I think it's good. I think it's good. I think and I think Swordmaster works out of, like very nice in this deck, especially with the witch attack as well. Um, so pretty, like, I'm pretty okay about this one. And then finally we got Double Cross. Um, this deck looks a little bit more normal. Um, but again, few texts. So basically, um, again, we have Lampard in the deck. We have taken out the other tall partners, such as Vincent or Leo, and we're just running a Lampard. So basically with this deck, um, we don't have that many, uh, Aristocrats to trigger ball because, well, we have Joachim, we have Roderick. Um, and then we have our uh, Van Morum Hunter. So this could be a little bit tricky. Like if they try to break our our ball, we could get in trouble because your server doesn't work um, with the spell because we're not devotion. So there are a few things here that could go wrong, but I think against both of these decks, you should be good because Lambert just straights up so massively and ball is just an awesome card. Now obviously you could have went for, for build without ball and stuff like that, but I think it's okay to be a little bit greedy and try to see if we can get this off. So that's basically the lineup. Um, the tournament is going to start in less than an hour from when I upload this video. Um, but before we end the video, I think I will just do like one game, one of these decks on ladder, and then that will be it. Okay, so we get the um, play Syndicate and we go up against uh, Ursa and Ritual. Now, Ursa and Ritual could be a few things it could be um, Madoc and it could also be Warriors. I could see this matching being kind of okay actually because we do have the white punish if they go for like Ceres and stuff. Um, but I'm not sure if it will be enough to actually win it. Um, let's see. 
that's the thing about the ladder. You, like, you don't know what you're going to queue, right? So sometimes you're going to get really good matchups and sometimes you're going to get really bad matchups. Um, whereas in tournament, you can kind of try to predict a little bit more. We have to kick the Fry and Rodanian here. Um, we have the Sewer Raiders, which works kind of nice with the Swindle, I guess. It means you could kick the Urchin. We have another thing. Okay, so now we have both thinning. We, I mean, the sand looks like it works, I think. May, uh, yeah, let, let, let's just try this. So if it's slip, we could get in str like struggle in terms of tempo, but, but let's see. So I think I could start off by going for the casino bouncers, maybe. So let's get this uh, thinning down here. Um, and then we would probably play the Swindle, play the Sewer Raiders. If we have the power for that, we would consider taking it. Otherwise, we can start playing cards like Adriano, um, Fence, even the Mages. So we do have a few options. So it's slippy. We don't have Tinboy here on one, which is a little bit of an issue. Um, because this is a lot of tempo, obviously. This I think I think this means that we have to like change the way we're playing this one a little bit. We're probably just gonna go Siggy here. Um because otherwise we'll probably just struggle with tempo, I'm afraid. Um do this, we could also flip the lamp here. No reason not to. Also not much reason to do it to be honest. Um Yeah, maybe let's just leave it at this. This this point we are kind of struggling for a spender. At the same time, we do have some tributes we can use, and we have Philippa, right? So, let's say we go Sewer Raiders. We still have nine coins, and we could go like Philippa, um, spend some coins on the Ceres, play the Supplementary Mages. They'll also spend a few coins, so it's probably going to be okay. So now we can go for the Sewer Raiders. The issue with defense is that obviously it's going to go very tall um, into his tall punish. Um, but it might still just be okay anyway. Probably going to try to play the Salamandra Mages first so I get extra value from the tribute. And as you can see, like we're actually keeping somewhat up with this tempo. Obviously, we're down a card, and um, but like we have played like. With the lamp, we're only down two points here. Um, he has played Gun Burst of Snakers and his Road Shout. Goes for the Blue Boy here, so that's basically a full leader, actually. Unless you want to hold the last charge. Hopefully, he kills the Flying Redane, that would be so good for me. But maybe just hold here. He decides to hold, that makes some sense. Um, I think I'm going to go for the Philippa here. Steal the Ceres. Just make sure that when we go to the next round, then um, regardless whether I win or lose, then the series is not gonna like he's gonna lose eight points of carry, right? Hopefully we'll find Tin Boy played on as well, so the Tin Boy will actually like play for pretty good value on his on his front row. Even without the series, it should still be strong in the long round. Um, either with or without the tribute. Takes the pass here. Wow. So actually, we can flip here, and then Swindle will activate my Intimidate on uh, Siggy, and then we should go into round three, into round two with Max Coin Carrier. Um, I'm really happy about this, to be honest. I am not like he played. I don't like how he played this. I guess. Oh yeah, actually, never mind. He obviously he saves the slice the chat. Never mind what I said before. Obviously, I'm just so used to seeing Ursain, Ursain, um Warriors. But obviously you don't want to use that um, in that situation. So I'm not sure if we need one Jackal. Maybe it's just better on the the mage here. Uh, probably also better on the fence. Um, now that we have our Jack, it's, it becomes less important. But it might still just be, be fine. Um, we don't have any urgency to drop a bit of coin carry. I think we just try pass. Unless we want to drop something to improve our... Our bank, which we probably could have done. Um, 
I could drop the Jekyll here, to be honest. I think that makes some sense. One man's battlefield is another man's ripe patch for harvest. Just drop the Jekyll. We have most of our combo pieces here. Um, one thing I want to look, look out for is whether or not he's playing the um, the version with Snowdrop or with um, Double Tall Punish, right? Because obviously there's, there's a heat wave. Uh, but there could also be some sort of like curse of corruption and it kind of depends how i want to play with madame um but i think like as long as we get access to our tin boy here we should be pretty fine it's rid of our redanian it's a little bit annoying um and obviously we also did commit the Siggy, so we have we have made some commitments here but i think generally the sign should be good enough especially these salamander mages which probably will struggle to deal with hopefully Drawing double fins and the Jackal again. The nice thing about double thinning is that you have like you see most of your deck, there's almost nothing left here. Um do we want double fins here? I'm not sure we do to be honest. So we, we missed the tin boy, but we do have a uh, bank to find it. Um, which is nice. I'm not sure if all these spenders are pretty necessary necessary in the sand. He lost the burner and he lost one bear with shit. Okay. We still don't know if he's got tall condition he's running. Spores could indicate he's not running a curse because he's like having this card as well. <clears throat> but no burner means that well, I mean that the discard burner means that he has one more discard in hand, I guess. Hmm. I'm just gonna try to build up some coins here. This is not a spin out that's particularly important for us right now. Probably just wanna like get the Salamander Mages down as soon as they play for full value. Because if I'm right and he actually struggles to deal with them, then these will be sick engines. And as you can see, we have a lot of tribute cards we don't really want to play before, if we can help it. Um, like, these are trip these are the cards we want to play. This is a tribute, this cannot be played before my time. This is tribute, this is tribute, this is tribute, this is spender that we could play. Okay, so this is really nice for me, I think. Um, now, obviously, it's nice when you can hold them until later. Um, in terms of... Um, Saving them for uh, like getting the adrenaline off. Um, but maybe we could just drop the Jekyll first. Maybe spend once on it. I think Jekyll spend once makes some sense, but I could also just go for the Salamander Mage. Honestly, I think it's fine. Learn that spell in just do this. Obviously, we don't want to kill anything because it's a boy. Um, he can kill it if he has some troll punishes or if he has um, stunning blow decoction. But I mean, if you use troll punish in this, it's not that great, right? Uh, because I'm mean, still having Madame Savola, like Jack Hell to spend with that sort of stuff. So, kind of a tricky, tricky situation for him. He just ignores it for now, which could backfire quite a bit for him, I think. Um, could just go for the other one then. And this is just going to play for so many points. Uh, just do this. Because now every time we play uh, a tribute, we're getting, well, plus one for each of these. So that's two. But uh, next, after the next turn, we'll gain four coins each time we play a tribute. And obviously, we have a bunch of tributes in hand right now. Um, so that's going to be very powerful. He goes for the mentor line here. Um, which is okay. I mean, if I have Troll Punish, it doesn't make much sense, and usually this this runs both Heat Wave and uh, Morales. Um, but okay, this is fine. It's not the most scary Minter either, so I don't mind it too much. Now, we could just drop this to be honest, um, or we could drop the Adriano. Mm, so basically, this gets the engine on one turn earlier, but we don't get the two coins. So I think this is actually better. Just play this, spend once, 
I don't want to die into a cutting slash or anything like that. I'm not sure if he actually played both of them. Um, so he played one cutting slash. Yeah, so he probably still has one in hand. Uh, so it's just nice to play around that. That's quite a late for a hunter to come down here. And now he starts trying to work on this, uh, but I think it's a little bit too late for him to be honest. Because now we're gonna give him another target he, can, he has to deal with, so we're gonna go Adriano here. And GNG we have two coins in, two coins in bank, we play, pay the tribute, and we end up with four coins in bank. That's just insane. Really, really good. And now he should cutting slices, but he might kill the seductress instead. Yeah, he completely, like, he doesn't realize how big of a threat this card is. Um, so we could just go Jack now, to be honest. Um, yeah, I think we just go Jack here. Let's get another spin down the board. Um, and we go for nine cards exactly, which is nice. And we can play Fence next, for instance. Um, funny thing is, right now, if we play a Fence, we, we pay two cards, which means we go to seven, and then we... We gain four coins back, but if we spend more coins before we do it, then this one plays for less value as well. So, actually, kind of a funny one. I think it might be better to spend once more with Jekyll first, to be honest. I think this, and then fence, and then spend. Yeah, I think this is correct. Just go to max coins again. And like this setup, like it's just so many points. Um, and then we have the Tin Boy Finisha coming in. Uh, there's just nothing you can do to that. And again, like only six cards left in, in deck. So like the bank is actually very consistent in round three in this build. It's so nice to have double thinning um, and Redanian so it's actually triple thinning. So we still haven't seen any Toll Punish, he's not running Snowdrop, so he's probably got Curse and Heatwave in hand here, I would imagine. Because if you had Snowdrop, you would play before all these discards, otherwise it doesn't make much sense. Let's see what he opts to go for. He played a jack. That's an interesting choice, I think. So I'm gonna do this now. And again, like here with Madame, it's actually better for us to activate the tribute, even though we probably don't need it. Because like otherwise we just don't get four coins. So basically we're paying two coins to get four coins. So I think we're supposed to take this, pay the tribute two, we go down to five, and then we go up to a nine again. Then we activate. And again, like obviously it's it's all looking fairly close still, but we have full bank, two liter charge, just two engines on the board, and two massive, massive finishes. Uh, I'm not quite sure what he's trying to do here. If like he's trying to sort of like champion charge or anything like that, that sounds a little bit crazy. Might well just be hitting random stuff. Oh, it's a more quack. Okay. Sure. Um, so is he running more Torpens and he's already the Heatwave more quack, he's running a Spores, he doesn't have a Curse as well, right? That would be kind of crazy. I mean, I have a feeling it's, it could be a Curse, but like... I think I... Should I really play around it? Maybe I should. So we do this, we gain 7 coins, and then we actually gave, we actually have to do this, right? Then we're gaining 6 coins now. That's insane. Like playing a, a Savola and then going for from three to uh, well from yeah from three to nine coins. That's just nuts. He's actually running curse as well. Like why would you run heat wave curse boss more crack? That's that's ab whoa. that's absolute overkill. 
Um, anyway, um, I'm just going to do this, try to see if we can get the tribute off. I don't think we can, it was just too low, unfortunately. Um, probably we still just went by a bunch, right? A very, 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 very weird list, um, but we took the win. Um, thanks so much for watching, guys. Um, again, I'm going to be playing in Tip 64 all day. Uh, you can follow the games on Twitch, otherwise I will also keep you posted on YouTube in the, in the following days. Um, so see you!